news at nine. This is the second part of our news broadcast tonight. Remember, this is the time when we get to discuss the political hot topics. This past week has been characterized by several political events. A lot has happened. Some even argue that the week that passed was probably one of the worst weeks in the life of this uh, Kenya Kwanzaa government. That aside, President Ruto is currently in France and I think he's supposed to be flying back anytime from now. Party politics is also going on. Jubilee just minutes ago effected changes to some positions within the party. Talk of Uru Kenyatta's return, all this and even the ongoing El Nino reigns, we want to discuss as much as time will allow us tonight. But first of all, allow me to introduce my guests in studio. I'm having Eston Miner. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Thank you for having us. Eston is a political scientist. And of course, sitting right beside Eston is uh, Ngugi Ndegwa. Mm -hmm. Ngugi Ndegwa has a lot of descriptions <laughs> attached to his <laughs> name. But allow me to just say he's the NAC Kenya Youth League uh, National uh, Chairman. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you so much, gentlemen, once again, and welcome to KUTV. So I want us to start from our top story this mm -hmm. evening, mm -hmm. which has got something to do with President Trudeau's mm -hmm. trips. Mm -hmm. Today, yesterday was in Germany, today he's in France. Mm -hmm. He has visited several other countries mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. Are these trips luxury or they actually have benefits for the country? Yes, Tom? Uh, I think it's a, it's a bit funny to see uh, an administration do the opposite of what they promised their people. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I believe uh, this administration promised that it was going to be uh, present and available for its people. And that is why it related more with the uh, Mamambogas yeah. and, uh, you know, the Watuwa Boda Boda. Mm -hmm. But recently, the Mamamboga in the picture is the IMF and the Mutuwa Boda Boda is the World Bank. Mm -hmm. Because uh, these are the people we see our president every now and then associating with. Um, I think... Uh, there has been a fresh uh, demand from the from the opposi opposition uh, on, based based on the the dialogue, and they requested that this government should consider cutting down 30 percent mm -hmm. of the domestic and foreign travel. Do you know how much that goes it, to cover? It, yeah. it is going to to cut 230 billion of the taxpayers' money based on these travels. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember, I recall the president saying that out of these travels, uh, we have been able to, uh, let me see, to invite or to, uh, to, to attract yeah. two trillion shillings worth of loans. Mm -hmm. The same very administration that promised that they were not longer going to take any more loans. So is it working for us, or is it working for the people in government? Mm -hmm. That is the question of the day. And Ndeg, we're just speaking from where he's left. Yes. Is okay. it really fair to accuse President William mm -hmm. Ruto mm -hmm. of being an absent president, mm -hmm. so to speak? Mm -hmm. When we normally see, I don't remember the last Sunday mm -hmm. we spent without seeing President Ruto going to the grassroots. Mm -hmm. He goes there for church services. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's still there. The, the people yes. who want to see him still see him. Is it fair to accuse him of being absent? Uh, um, first of all, let me thank you for having invited me to this show. Mm -hmm. I do not take it for granted. And uh, second to say, it will be unfair to say that uh, the president is wrong in traveling because, again, he has his reasons. Mm -hmm. And uh, remember, every president has, when they come to power, they have uh, their own styles of working. I will refer to a time when I was not born, uh, and that is when the president, uh, the first, the founding president of this nation, was in power. And uh, um, uh, from the stories I gather, he never travelled really much, uh, not because he did not uh, want to travel, but probably because of uh, what I hear health issues. Maybe he had uh, his own fears of travelling yeah. or being on the plane, uh, but. <laughs> that notwithstanding, again, we see that uh, there is a president now who wants to travel in, in his own view. He thinks that is good for the nation because he sees it as a way to attract friends, to go to friends because uh, probably they will not come to him. And uh, I will summarize that in one phrase by saying that if the mountain will not go to Moses, 
then Moses must go to the mountain. And so that is uh, what, in my view, the president is doing, mm -hmm. going to the mountain to find what he must find. Now, uh, the only problem will be if um, then he does not meet what he needs, uh, he goes there to, to meet. Okay. But if it works, then why not? Okay. That is why he's the president. <laughs> yes. Eston, this, I think, goes to you. Today I was looking at uh, the president's address to the EU parliament. Yes. This is the first time he's doing this. Okay. And the president of the EU parliament, when introducing him to speak, referred to Kenya as a strategic ally in the African continent. These are recognitions. Do you think it just came about or it is because of the president actually putting the country out there through these trips and other initiatives? We've even seen several heads of states and governments visiting here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what I can say is that I like to give uh, credit where it's due. Okay, we have a president who happens to be a very good orator. And out of that, based on the public addresses he has had uh, outside uh, the, the presence of our country, uh, we have been able to attract some recognition from, uh, from other countries and other investors. Mm -hmm. That withstanding, we have a president who has traveled more in his first year than some presidents have done in two terms. We have to balance, we have to strike a balance, and I believe that is why we have ambassadors. So why do we have high commissioners? Mm -hmm. Why is he doing the work of the High Commission as the ambassadors? I believe we have, we have the CEOs for foreign affairs. Are these people incompetent? Is this why the president has to come in? Because I remember there was a time he said that if I as the president know more than you do in your ministry, then that should be a problem. Is this what is forcing the president to have to, to, to oversee the deals himself? Because I believe... Uh, uh, he can send these people and that is why he delegated power as the president because we also need him here. Mm -hmm. We also need him to, to, to listen to us. Mm -hmm. But when you have a president who is operating on transit like cargo, now it becomes a problem mm -hmm. because now we have a president who is more of a globetrotter. He's only globetrotting all over the, 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 the world. So would I be misquoting you if I said in simple terms what yes. you're saying is that we have a president who is micromanaging how things happen and a president who doesn't really have trust in people who he has himself given power Appointed. to execute some of these exactly. roles. Exactly, and that would happen when you, uh, when you award positions based on political uh, tokenship as opposed to merit. Because if you have people you trust yourself, you would not see any need to micromanage. But when you yourself know I only appointed my buddies who may maybe not be as competent, mm -hmm. then you have the problem or you have the trust issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, Ndegwa, let's come back to yes. mm -hmm. putting this against mm -hmm. uh, the home front. Yes. Clearly the president is mm -hmm. working and doing a lot on the international front. Mm -hmm. Do you think he's not achieving much mm -hmm. as at, uh, at the home front? Are things falling asunder uh -huh. while he is globetrotting, as some may put it? Definitely, there is a lot to be desired in as far as the Kenyan economy is, uh, is concerned. And as far as uh, what we have in our pockets is concerned, I, I will say that uh, things seems, seem to be falling apart. Uh, th that is for sure, and that is something that we cannot deny. But uh, again, uh, I will give the president the benefit of the doubt by saying that um, probably what people say that it gets worse before it gets better mm -hmm. would be true. Mm -hmm. And um, if that is anything to go by, then probably in the, if we were to allow uh, the president probably to work out his plan, and that is what I've been saying from the very start, that the president has been in power for what for like a year or something yes or even probably more mm -hmm. but uh, if we were to give him a little more time mm -hmm. to be able to understand what his game plan is and if that plan is a game changer mm -hmm. then we will be able to understand but in regards to his uh, uh, global politics and his view of things internationally mm -hmm. i think he is perfect on it he has his grasp on it. Mm -hmm. uh, I really liked what he did uh, in his first months as president when uh, he started the, the Pan-Africanist uh, campaign. Yeah. Though along the way he seems to have changed his heart. I don't know why he has, mm -hmm. but I really admired that, that, that side 
of a Pan-African president. Mm. If he would have kept on it, then that would have been perfect. But nonetheless, uh, I would say that uh, probably we should give him more time. Mm. But the president speaks like mm. uh, an African leader. Mm. Even mm. today, the speech that I'm referring to, which mm. he gave to the EU parliament, mm. he spoke like the Kenyan president yes. and also like a champion for the whole continent, not just Kenya. Uh, the, only, the only place he faltered yeah. is uh, when the king was in was, was <laughs> I think uh, that to every Pan-Africanist we agree that uh, I, I, there was something that was amiss. Mm -hmm. But nonetheless, I like his Pan-Africanist agenda. Mm -hmm. I like his uh, view of international politics. Yeah. And I'm hoping, and I'm using the word hoping, mm -hmm. that uh, his plan becomes a game changer because we need that. But in regards to as, uh, uh, where we are at now, I will say let's give him time mm -hmm. because again uh, it, it's the economy is not something that you just flip and it changes okay i yes. want us to go now to party politics enough with the, the trips of the president <laughs> and uh, jubilee party will mm -hmm. form a very big part of mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. but before that mm -hmm. uhuru returns mm -hmm. from nowhere mm -hmm. the president former president that mm -hmm. is is back and he's back with a message he's saying hey leave me out of your mess mm -hmm. when you fail to succeed in what you are doing let me not be Inboot. taking the fall for what you have done mm -hmm. president uru kenyatta's return yes. is it a game changer in the political space or uh, he did not deliver presidency to raila odinga <laughs> will he make any <laughs> change when he comes when he comes okay. back this is what I will say. Um, I think it was important for him to, to come back. Because now, uh, as my colleague here said, um, that we need to give this regime time, as they have always said. But what do we judge this administration based upon? We judge them on the time frames that they give us. We do not give them the, the time frames. They are the people who came while campaigning and told the public we will deliver so and so that at this particular time. So we do not push the government based on our own idea of how a government should operate. We push them based on their own time frames. So then to come back again and say uh, we are not delivering on our promises because uh, you know the former president uh, left empty coffers, then you go ahead and borrow more than he borrowed in one term to to cover the same to bridge the same gap. So. Are you making it better for us or are you making it worse? Mm -hmm. So I think it's timely. It's, uh, I mean, it was long overdue. For, for some of us, we missed him because we, we, need, we still need his guidance because he's still young. As you can see, even in the, the developed countries, uh, we have uh, the likes of Obama mentoring the current president. Mm -hmm. It is not unheard of. Mm -hmm. And I would want a situation where uh, the president or the, the, the government of the day mm -hmm. and the retired president, uh, you know, sit on one table because uh, he was there and he understands maybe uh, the realms of power more than this regime because he has been there longer. Yeah. So I, I, I'd find it more prudent when we have the, this government working together with our former president. Mm -hmm. So it is timely and I believe if we use it accordingly, it could work uh, on our own, for our own benefit and for the good of the country. Okay, you speak about the relationship between Barack Obama and Joe, Joe Biden. Biden. Yes. But... That is something we are not seeing, seeing in Kenya yeah. soon, yeah. and we are not going to see. The relationship, I think it was broken mm -hmm. beyond repair. Uh, beyond repair. Mm -hmm. But we look at that and many more when we return from this mm -hmm. break. Don't go too far. When we come back, we look at the resurrection of Raila Odinga. This 17 billion shillings <laughs> scandal. oil, I don't know if it is uh, good to call it a scandal yet. Mm -hmm. It is a saga. Maybe we wait for yes. investigations to continue. Yes. But anyway... We come back, we look into that after this break.